In this video, I'll tell you about five painting mistakes that I try not to make, so you can try to avoid them too. So just to start, a quick note. These are things in the wargaming, like painting hobby, that are mistakes for me, right? There's a possibility that they might not be mistakes for you. For me, mistakes are things that cause me to have to repaint a model or repaint a part of a model, uh, you know, or things that become like a, like a, like a, you just a, a, a blockade, right? You know, and then that kills my motivation to finish a model or a group of models or whatever. The goal is always to get finished models, right? So anything that I do that inhibits that, you know, again, uh, splotch paint in some spot and I got to repaint that leg or, you know, use the wrong color or go on too thick with the washes, any stuff like that. I see all of that as a mistake. So learn from my mistakes. You might be making mistakes and you don't even realize it. Maybe you just think that you're bad at painting, but actually you're just making mistakes. Number one, painting your models in an assembly line is a good idea until it is a bad idea. Okay, so what do I mean by that? When I'm talking about an assembly line, what I'm talking about is painting a bunch of models that look kind of the same. They're wearing the same uniforms or whatever. If you're just painting, let's say, five different Dungeons and Dragons characters or whatever, you got like a wizard and you got a ranger, maybe a couple of skeletons and a goblin or two. Like you're painting those in series. You're like, oh, I'm working on this guy and I'm working on this guy. That's not exactly assembly line. It kind of is. But what you're doing is just kind of saving time. While this is drying, you go on and work on the next one. If you just work on one single model, you kind of have to wait for it to dry a lot and that slows you down. So working on this and then going over to the next one and the next one, it's kind of assembly line, but it's not exactly what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes you do get benefits of like, oh, I've done brown on this guy's cloak and now I've got brown, I'll put it on this one's boots, that kind of stuff. When I mean assembly line though, I mean I am painting a lot of models who look alike. They are dressed the same, same uniform, same armor, whatever. Uh, that type of thing. And you are like, I'm doing boots now. Boots, 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 boots. Now I'm doing shield, 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 that kind of thing. That's really what I'm talking about with assembly line. And it is important to kind of figure out your level, your number that you can handle before you lose your mind, right? For a lot of people, it's a pretty low number. Um, you know, and some people it's a lot higher. I used to, when I first started out, doing more than five models in a, in like, in a group like that, I couldn't even imagine it. Now, I think the most I've ever done was 13. I'm currently working on 10 models, uh, 10 intercessors, Death Watch intercessors on Twitch, and um, that's fine. I did 13 plague monks on Twitch years ago, and they are all mostly identical, same cloaks, same everything for the most part. And um, that was a lot. That was probably my high end before it drives me nuts. Find out your specific number by starting low, hitting like, I don't know, three to five models. And then if that's okay and you can get through them, then, you know, then go on to adding another model or two next time you do a project that has a bunch of folks that all have to kind of look the same again because of uniforms or whatever. Keep adding to that until you uh, hate it and then stop. Then don't, the next time just, you know, just keep doing it. Just edge forward. If all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I got to do 20 beastmen. I'm going to do them all at once. You're, that's going to be, that's going to be tough. Find your number and then stay there for a while. Number two. All opaque, non-metallic paints are meant to be thinned. Some people, I think, don't quite realize that. Um, and all is maybe a strong word, but let's just say most. Almost all. How about that? Almost all opaque, non-metallic paints are meant to be thinned. If you go straight from the pot to the model, you will get a chalky, a chalky looking model in almost every situation. With some paint manufacturers, you will get a much chalkier looking model than others. But for the most part, going straight from the pot directly to the model is not a good idea. Now, you may want a textured look if you're painting, I don't know, like Turnip 28 models and stuff like that. They have a tendency to look very textured and muddy and stuff like that. That's a different story. But for most situations, you, you, you want to thin your opaque paints even just a little bit. You don't even really need to thin them too much. Very frequently, just adding them to your wet palette, you know, that you've, you've probably been using a wet palette. You should be using a wet palette. Here's how to build one. Pachow. Um, 
but adding them to the wet palette and then maybe taking like just a brush full of water, you know, just put it in your water pot thing and then start kind of moving that paint around on the wet palette. That's literally all you need to thin your paints in most situations. Again, depending on the manufacturer. Um, the two thin coats thing that you hear all the time, that's not just clever marketing. It's, it's actually very important because you don't want that kind of Again, unless you're doing something where they're supposed to look textured. In most situations, you want your models to look kind of smoothish, right? Kind of nicely painted. You don't actually don't want them to look painted. You want them to look like that's the color they're supposed to be. Not like, oh, I see that you put a bunch of paint on that model, right? Now, contrasts, speed paints, uh, you know, depending on all the different names from different manufacturers, shades, washes, glazes, those things you can generally use just out of the pot. And I do it all the time. But with regular paints, it's a good idea to put it onto a wet palette. Uh, thin it down just even a little bit, and then that two thin coats thing, like I said, it's pretty important to making your models look really nice. Number three, leave well enough alone. Um, especially for tabletop quality models, knowing when to leave parts of the model alone and just not paint on them anymore is actually kind of huge. It saves you a whole bunch of time and all kinds of stuff like that. And also, you're less likely to screw it up if you keep working on it, keep working on it, so you'll be like, well, now I've done too much. If you painted the, I don't know, power armor of your model, right? Let's say you're wearing, you're doing a Space Marine, very possibly you might be. If you painted that power model or power armor of that model with an airbrush, right? You did a Zenithal, like you did like, I don't know, let's say a nice dark color, and then you sprayed over it with a nice, a nice red to get the variations and the gradients and all that kind of stuff because you're doing, I don't know, Blood Angels or something like that. You went through all of that, right? And if you don't want them to be battle damaged, which I do frequently want my Space Marines to look a little beat up and all that kind of stuff, but you want yours to look kind of nice and clean and smooth and all that kind of stuff, then once you've done that airbrush, the armor's done. Don't, don't go back in and go, well, now I got to put a wash on it. Now I got to put this in there. Now I got to put some glazes and some blending and all that kind of stuff. You've done your gradient. Again, tabletop model. It's done. Not the entire model. You got to paint out the eyes and the whatnot and the gun and all that kind of stuff. But Making sure you don't go back and go, well, I got to work on the model a whole bunch to really make sure like it's, some people think it's cheating to airbrush, but really, if you do it right, it, it saves you so much time and you don't have to move forward. And just thinking, well, I better go back in and just touch everything. No, the airbrush was good enough in those situations, right? They're supposed to, pe they're supposed to speed up your, your paint job. Let them especially on a tabletop model. If you want to go back and, you know, highlight edges, fine, you know, like use either edge highlighting or maybe a little bit of dry brushing that's very directed and, and, and careful, great, you can do that on the edges to the stuff. But if, if those models are supposed to be like pretty clean, leave them clean once you've put that airbrush over the top of them or whatever kind of, you know, dry brush that you did initially for a Zenithal or something like that, going back into the flat areas and like deciding to put in a whole bunch of extra stuff, if you don't need to, it's just gonna slow you down, right? Leave them alone if they're supposed to be clean. Number four, it is better to build up than to cover up, right? You can always add another thin layer, whether it's using for glazes or washes or edge highlighting or even dry brush and stuff like that. But if you've added too much in that first level, there's, there's no undo, sadly. There's no control Z to go, well, I screwed that up. I'm going to go backwards. You, you, you always want to be sure to take a, a look at what you're doing and figure out, will I screw this up? If I add too much, should I maybe thin this down? If you're trying to be a little subtle, if you're trying to do some very subtle edge highlighting, doing it very, very lightly, and then like, well, that wasn't quite enough. I'll do it again. Well, that wasn't quite enough. I'll do it again. Versus going, I'm gonna hit this, and then just, and then you, it's a mess, and then you've kind of screwed it all up, and now you have to try to figure out how to like, you know, paint it over again or, or clean it up or something like that. All of those types of things. Having a light hand and doing several layers again, whether it's edge highlighting, dry brushing washes, glazes, all that kind of stuff, you know, having that, having those several layers will give you more control and then you can stop when you want to, but going too heavy is something you can't come back from. And then you have to go back and fix the problem, which runs the risk of making things worse. And it also slows you down. And finally, number five, if you paint fast, don't expect high quality, right? Now, some people can get high quality while painting fast. It does happen. I've got some good friends of mine, Sam Lenz and Vince Venturella come to mind. They are amazing examples of folks who can paint fast and uh, get amazing quality. Now, 
when they are trying to win awards with display paint like quality stuff they are not trying to paint fast and and and, and you know because but if they're looking at tabletop stuff yeah they can they can crank out some amazing looking tabletop stuff stuff far better than i can and they can do it really quickly quick quicker than i can but it's it's because they've been doing it for a very long time. If you start practicing, right, and you start working, you'll kind of start to head into that direction as well, very potentially. I've been doing this now for not a really long time, but a pretty decent amount of time. And, you know, I paint a good deal faster than I did when I first started. I have a very strong memory of painting, um, I believe it was bl- uh, a Black Templar. No. No, Black Legion, Black Legion Chaos Space Marines. I did my Tau first when I first got into 40K in 5th edition, got rid of the Tau, and then moved into Black Legion. And getting five models painted for a a combat patrol took forever. But I was being very, very careful. I was being very... And and here's the thing. Those models still stand up relatively okay today for some of my earliest kind of, um, you know, paint jobs within the realm of like, let's say Warhammer 40,000, for example, I'd painted stuff previous, but for my first, not, not my first, but almost my first 40 K models, they weren't too bad, but it took me forever to get through them. And that's kind of the thing. If you want good results, you're going to have to expect things to take some time, right? Most new painters who are unhappy with their paint jobs also spent very little time on them. I've seen people who you know, look at this paint job and they're like, ah, it's just not, I don't know, things aren't clean and things aren't smooth. And I kind of, and I'm like, I, I ask, well, how long did it take you? And they're like, ah, like nearly an hour. And you're like, well, you know, it's, especially when you begin, it's going to take you longer. So take a little bit more time, you know, and, and if you're looking to get high quality, take a little bit more time, be a little bit more careful, that'll happen. But if you're just like, I want to get stuff on the table, there's a lot of different speed techniques out there, but don't expect super crazy high quality when you're also doing it really quickly. Starting is slow, but as you start to do it more and more and more, you will naturally speed up. So that's the five mistakes that I try and still sometimes fail to avoid in miniature painting. Keep these in mind and learn from my past mistakes and you should hopefully get more models finished quicker. Remember, mistakes aren't the end of the world. They generally just steal time from you finishing a project and they can be overcome. If you have a painting mistake, you've made in the past and you'd like others to learn from it, drop it in the comments down below. If you liked this video, it'd really help if you'd hit the like button down there as well. There's confetti or fireworks or something, I guess, when you do, and uh, it, it helps get the video out to more people, which means more painted models on more tables, potentially, you know, across from you and your next game. Also, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and thanks for watching.